Now, the rest of the story. Among the multitude of lives claimed by the American Uncivil War, honor this one more, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. He was no fighter, really. He was a professor, a theological seminary-educated college-level teacher of religion and rhetoric and modern languages. But then along came the Battle of the Brothers, and Josh Chamberlain enlisted in the 20th Maine Infantry. By May of 1863, he was a colonel. He took part in 24 battles, including Antietam and Fredericksburg and Chancellorville and Gettysburg. And then there was Petersburg, June 1864, and the enemy gunfire that would end his life. I said the enemy gunfire that would end his life. I'm quoting from an in memoriam circular issued by the commandery of the state of Maine. Quote, at Petersburg on the 18th of June, he led an attack on a strong position from which a heavy artillery fire was directed on his advance. Many of his men were swept down, and Chamberlain's horse was killed by a shell. The attack was pushed with vigor, and while leading it on foot, Chamberlain fell, shot through by a ball which passed through the body from hip to hip, severing arteries and fracturing bones. He was carried from the field. End quote. But there was more. Colonel Chamberlain's color bearer had already been killed in the battle. Josh had seized the bearer's flag and was holding it aloft when the rifle shot that was to take his own life was fired. Yet even then, Josh refused to surrender. To prop himself, he plunged his own sword into the ground and he clung there shouting orders until finally from loss of blood he fell unconscious and he was carried to a field hospital where surgeons said it was too late. Yet even then, Josh refused to surrender. His brother, Major Tom Chamberlain, found two doctors who were willing to work on Josh, and they patched him together without promising how many hours he had. His injury had been considerable. Infection had spread. He lay in chills and fever and agony, and time was running out. So Josh, in a few coherent moments, scrawled a farewell note. Quote, my darling wife, I am lying mortally wounded. And then, dying, he expressed his love that would never die. But this is the rest of the story. The news of Josh Chamberlain's death was front-page fodder in Portland, Maine. The Daily Eastern Argus subhead said one of the noblest Maine has produced. For there were accomplishments in the life of Josh Chamberlain yet to be mentioned. He was a professor, as I said, but he was also appointed surveyor of the Port of Portland. He was an American commissioner to the Universal Exposition in Paris. He was president of Bourdain College. He was recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor. And four terms, governor of the state of Maine... For these reasons, among others, the death of Civil War hero Joshua Chamberlain was worthy of note. For miraculously, Josh lived a little longer after being wounded at Petersburg. He lived long enough to receive the Congressional Medal, to be appointed port surveyor and exposition commissioner and college president, and four times to be elected governor of his home state. Joshua Chamberlain did die of complications from that Civil War wound, all right. And thus he is numbered among the casualties of that conflict. Though he died in February of 1914, a full half century after the shot that killed him. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs>